Hey everybody, uh, today I'm going to actually bring you a, kind of a simple quick tutorial on this one's in case you uh, break a partition or you've put in a device, um, a new hard drive and then reload and didn't remove some of the old bootloaders and this sometimes happens especially when removing a drive. So what I'm going to be showing you today um, happens in this case when you either say you had a, two hard drives in your computer. Uh, one hard drive already had Windows on it, and then you got a new hard drive, and you wanted to load another set of Windows on it and not boot to the old one. Or you did dual boot, and this happened. Um, this is caused by you losing a partition for this uh, action to apply. Uh, one way to see kind of what I'm talking about is I'm going to open up disk management on this computer. We're going to break this computer in my case. It's a virtual machine, and once I break it, I'm going to show you the steps to repair what I broke. Um, this what I broke, what I'm going to break is actually gonna be acting like I pulled out a hard drive or partition got corrupted or I accidentally overrid a partition. That's when this happens. So I'm gonna show you right here. So you see this partition, it says system reserved. This is usually installed on the default windows, especially if you don't force a uh, specific specific uh, settings onto your partition. So say if you just went to a new drive, you installed Windows 7, it's going to give you a system reserved, and it's going to give you a C drive. That is the basics of what Windows will do. Now say if you uh, went in to install Windows and you instantly created a partition, well everything's going to be installed on that one partition, unless otherwise stated. But in this case I have two, so I did the default install. Now what I'm going to be doing here is the system reserved, which has system active and primary partitions, is going to actually get removed. This is going to act like I'm pulling out a hard drive. So say on accident somehow I have my Windows partition installed on this right here, and then I had a second hard drive that had my actual system active and primary partition. Now the primary partition doesn't really mean anything, it's the system and active. Uh, basically, when your computer boots up, it's going to look at the MBR. The MBR is going to look for an active drive. That active drive then points out where to find the boot files or what you can boot into. And in this case, I have C, which is bootable. That has its boot partition. It has all its primary information so I can get it to boot. And there's other steps to uh, repair a bootloader. But in this case, I want to show you how to get back to where your basics of running in this case, so you don't have to do that. Um, when you repair a bootloader, it will actually try to scan all the win all the partitions that you have to add in all the windows so you have all those options to boot. Um, and see those options to boot, I'm going to go over here real quick and go to msconfig. Um, this is actually going to look at the bootloader, and the bootloader is right here. It's going to tell me what OSs I have. In this case, all I have is one OS, I only have one hard drive, so I'm not too worried about that. But that's kind of the uh, basis of this. So I'm going to actually start off by breaking my partition. As you can tell, I can't remove this partition. I'm in the machine that's running on it. It won't let you. If it does, then you are very good at what you do. <laughs> and you shouldn't be able to do that. Um, you can, I think you can override it with this part if you uh, try. But in this case, we're not going to worry about that. I'm going to actually attach this onto my personal computer here. Right here, we're going to open up disk management. Now, since this is a virtual machine, I can easily just open up my own disk management, attach the, v, uh, the file that this is stored on, and then delete that partition. So, And kind of just show you, since I'm running off a server here, server runs the same way. System and active, that's where it finds everything it needs to boot. My boot is always with my Windows, and then I have my own storage. As you can tell I have different storage devices, and we're not going to worry about that. But we want to attach, there we go, attach a VHD. Browse, and we're not done do this on Windows 7. We're done do this on. If I can find Windows 10, we'll be much happier. Windows 10, I am blind. Click OK. Make sure you don't choose a read only if you're doing this on a virtual machine as a test subject. So right here we have our active partition. We're gonna go. Oops, I deleted it. Now. Since I deleted it, as you can tell, none of the, for G, in this case is what it named it for this computer, has active boot uh, system, it just has primary partition. Now I deleted the system reserve. Now, I can leave the system reserve deleted and make this the active for that device. I can make it the active, I can make it the system, I can make it the boot. Um, in normal standards, you don't want to do that, you don't want it to have it all on one. But in this case, I want to show you how to get it back, so then we can work it back to this partition. Now you can automatically through the disk reformat, but I want to show you through a GUI interface. So next thing we need to do is insert a disk 
in this case. Um, I'm going to be using a Windows 10 disk. This is kind of a little bit easier. We're going to click start. Now, when I boot this machine, it's going to throw me an error. Oh. Please be aware, you do need to detach the drive. <laughs> detach. Yes. Get a few seconds. There we go. Now, if I start it up, I can work it. Uh, it doesn't like it when the VHD file is actually in use by multiple devices. So, in this case, it didn't find the bootloader. So, w what did it find? It found my Windows 10 setup CD. Uh, depending on how your system is set up, if I actually click cancel here. Yep, we're going to turn off the machine. So, if I remove the disk here, do -do 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 -do, and power back on the machine. Uh, it's going to give you an error. It's going to say, can I find the NTLDR, or it'll say, can I find the boot? In this case, boot failure. Reboot. Select your proper device and enter the boot disk media. We can easily fix that. So let's go and put in my CD again. Uh, I'd say the best thing to do is use the same um, use the same CD as you're using for the operating system or something newer. So it's now Windows 10. There isn't really anything newer other than uh, I can go with Windows Server. Um, and this is running 64-bit. Uh, Windows Server um, 20, I think it's 2016. I haven't actually played around with that yet. You can use that CD. Basically, you can use any much any CD, but I recommend using the same CD as the operating system or something newer. Um, it will recognize more partitions, and it'll be better at recognizing what's needed or what's missing or what can be found and all that information. So once you get to the normal CD, we're going to click Next, and then we're going to go Repair My Computer. Now. We want to go to troubleshooting since I'm using the Windows CD. We're going to go advanced options and we want to work our way to command prompt. Why to command prompt? Because command prompt is where we're going to run all the fun commands for this procedure. So, first thing we need to do is open up this part. This will allow us to see all our partitions and see what values they have. Um, this will also help out when later on when I have to run one last command, which will actually rebuild the active and all the boot procedures. So as we wait for this load and scanning all the hard drives, uh, sometimes it'll uh, throw an error if it, the hard drive has issues. But this will actually allow us to see what we have. So if I go list disks, or disk in this case, we have one disk. I'm not too worried about it. But I'm going to select it anyway, so it's just a procedure I do. You, it's easier if you type a zero into it. Basically what I'm trying to do is select where I want to go. I'm pushing down the tree. I like to do it this way to make sure I select what I need and it does set where, where it needs to be. So if you have multiple disks, I recommend just saying, hey, I want to select my disk zero. Now even though I selected disk zero, it doesn't mean anything. It really does not mean anything until you get down to the volumes. But we're going to go list partition. This will show us what partitions are on that disk. Partitions should be the same as the volumes in most cases. So we're just going to go select partition if I can spell, one. Boom. All right, and the last thing we need to do is find volume. So we're going to go list volume. Now, when we go list volumes, these are what is actually been registered with the letter. So, you know, your letter C, your letter D, your letter F, your letter A, your letter B, whatever the letters might appear. In this case, I have D and C. The D is the disk drive. The C is actually from the disk. So we have volume one. Well, I'm going to actually just say make sure select volume one. Please be aware we need to mark that letter of C because C is going to actually be uh, pushed into this uh, a little bit later. Then we're going to mark it as active. Marking as active means this is the first, this is a partition the bootloader needs to look at. So when the BIOS goes and starts looking at the hard drives, it's going to look for that active partition. That active partition will lock it on to what partitions or what hard drives will have the actual boot files. Now we can actually click this part. Now please be aware, we need to look at this. Volume 1 is C. So we need to go BCD, boot. We're going to go C, Windows, C, doot, doot. So what I'm saying here is I'm going to say I need to build a boot. My C backslash Windows is stored with the boot files. And this is where I'm storing my information for the boot on the C drive. So this is saying... My first operating system is at C Windows, and my boot information is going to be exactly on the root of C. If I type this correctly, it will work correctly. But I did not because I did not type a slash S, did I? Uh, da -da -da -da. Oops. Yeah, I did that wrong. Sorry about that. Da -da 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 -da. 
doot. I believe it was slash S. Sorry, I haven't done this in a while. Volume load primer to designate the target system partition. There we go. All right. So what I did is I forgot the forward slash S. So it should be BCD boot. Where's that operating system at? So C backslash Windows. Then I need to do a forward slash S to point out where I want to store all this information, which is going to be at the C backslash. So at the root of C. So it should work that way. So we're going to go exit. We're going to turn off this PC. Now I need to eject the drives because this will auto override with my drive. So we're going to eject that. And I'm going to click power on. Doot doot. Waiting. Boom. Okay, as you can tell, the operating system came back up. That is a good sign. That means my boot and all that was re Okay, so now that I'm back in the hard drive, uh, back in that computer, and now I'm using the disk management, you can tell that this is still out and allocated. This is where our system reserved was. It didn't have a drive letter, and that was a good sign. You usually try to hide that because viruses tend to try to overwrite it. The main reason why they're separate, if I didn't say that earlier. Now, as you can tell here, I have my system, and I have my active now on my C drive. So everything's actually on one drive now. You can do that same procedure and actually force it to this drive. But from here, I'm just going to actually go new simple volume. We're going to go next. We're going to say I want all the allocation to it. It doesn't matter what letter. I'm going to mark this as system reserved. And we're just going to do a quick format. I'm not too worried about data being lost in this case. So it's going to be reformatting. You might get a little pop-up. Hey, do you want to format this? Let's click cancel because it's already formatting it. We got system reserved. Well, actually, I don't want that be able to be accessed. So we're going to go change drive letter path. Remove. Yes. So it should go back to the default of system reserved. I have no partition. I have no way to link to it unless you know some special ways. We're not going to worry about that because we don't need to know those special ways. Now, as you can tell up here, it might say still raw. Really is not... Um, just go refresh. Just make sure it finds it correctly. Yeah, it's just glitched. Wow. It, it does that sometimes. The disk management isn't the best. So we have this back. Now we can actually go and mark this as the active partition. We can say yes. All right. Now I just marked this as active partition. What does that exactly mean? That means it's going to look here to boot. Now your system's over here. Will it still boot? Let's go and find out. Do -do we're gonna go shine out. We're gonna go restart. Okay, so I just moved the active partition. I moved it back to where the system reserves should have been. In this case, after I did that, it broke it. So all you have to do is go and add that add back in that media file, or your media device, or your boot device. And then we're going to go control up delete, which will send me to that screen, which don't do that. We want to go mouse captured. Yes, I got it. All right, it's just easier if I just tell it to reboot. Um, we're just going to turn it off. Yeah, when you're using a virtual machine, depending on what you're using, Hyper-V is one that does not do the override unless you go to actions and do the control delete, which it should be controlled and for different, which is different from VMware, which is control out, uh, control alt insert. And this pop-up really needs to stop. And we're done. Go end. There we go. And end will send me there. So it doesn't work when you're remote desktoping in. <laughs> As you can tell, how many times I've messed this up, and we need a boot. Thank you. Woo. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's it's a special occasion. Okay, so once we're back in the CD, we're gonna click next. We're gonna go back to our repair your computer. It's going to give us the blue screen of awesomeness, troubleshoot. We're going to go to advanced options. We're going to go to command prompt. After it loads back up, we need to open up this part real quick. We already marked the partition as active. So we already know it's going to be active, but we don't know what our volume letters are. 
this part is the greatest way to see it that I know of at the time of this video recording. And it's probably one of the simplest, and then it allows you to verify that it's marked as active. Okay, so once it's open, we're just going to go list volume. Boom. So we have volume one, volume two. Well, we want volume one to be our active partition. Just to verify, we're going to go select volume one. I'm going to say yay, we're going to say active. So please be aware these are C and D now. They're inverse. Uh, basically, C will always see it as a different letter than what your normal partition would see it as in general and usually. So once we exit out of this part, we're going to do the BCD boot. We need a point where uh, our operating system is. So this time it's going to be on D backslash Windows. Then we need to do forward slash S. And we need to force it on to the C backslash. There we go. So now we're saying, okay, our operating system we know is on D. Why do I know it's on D? Because I have 126 gigs. That partition was 126 gigs that our operating system was running from. I know uh, that we need to put it, all our information on the C drive because it's named System Reserved. I named it System Reserved because that's usually what's specified or pre-installed on the computer. So once we do that, we can go exit, turn off your computer, remove my media in this case, eject, turn it back on, Let it load. Boom. So the operating system starts working again. So all I did is, all, all the steps I took is, okay, my system reserve went missing. So I rebuilt my boot. After rebuilding my reboot, I went into my operating system. And I said, hey, one of my partitions are actually invalid. Or it's supposed to be system reserved. Well, I remade my system reserved partition. After remake my system reserved partition, I did a reboot after forcing it to active back to the CD so I can actually put all my information on how to start up the computer or where to find the boot files back to my system reserved. Now, I stated earlier in a quick simple blurb is that why is the system reserved is separate from your actual boot? Well, viruses used to take over that system reserved. It would load up odd things, add information that wasn't needed, or break some of the system so the computer won't boot up. So system reserved actually got moved to a secondary partition. Uh, that partition in stored your instructions on where to find the boot and what you can boot into. Now, the reason why I removed the letter from it is to make sure it's harder to get into that. When it's not a reference file or a reference to be able to be accessed, it's harder for a virus to find it. Usually viruses will find by what partitions you have and then they pull your data and then modify what they find. In this case, it's hidden. Now, some viruses know specific ways that you can go around and get into that. But in this case, it makes it harder. For a virus to do that would mean it would probably most likely or high percent chance it would trigger your antivirus before it ever had a chance to touch it. And in some cases, like what I'm doing is I'm loading into the CD, the CD will actually override and say, hey, we found this partition and something is broken here. Would you like to repair? You just click repair and it'll do it. But if you want to make sure it works, that's the best steps to take. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. If you feel like I jumped a little bit, please leave a comment down below. If you like the video, please like. If you uh, enjoy the video and you want to see others, please uh, leave a comment, uh, message me, tell me what you would like to see, and I'll be happy to help you guys. Y'all have a good one, and hope you enjoyed.